What's going on everyone? So earlier today I made a video diving into the reports that the Lakers may potentially just give D'Angelo Russell a big balloon payment. Now for all the details and all the all the information on that, if you haven't checked out that video, go check out that video after this video. I don't really need to watch that video to get this video, uh, but I want to talk about something that I kind of brushed on uh, in the last video at the end that I think is very, that needs some attention in and of itself. But to kind of bring you up to speed on the things that you need to know is that the Lakers, uh, they don't want to lose D'Angelo Russell because they can't really replace D'Lo if they lose him, right? Yes, they could potentially get their full uh, non-taxpayer mid-level. Problem is, one, you get hard cap, two, you run the risk of potentially not being able to keep Max Christie. It just becomes a mess. So you're basically trading two guys for one guy that this free agency class isn't very great. So the idea and the thinking is, okay, D'Lo opts out. He goes and explores his market. Let's say a team like Orlando comes in and goes, hey, we'll give you $19 million to come play for us. And then the Lakers go, okay, well, you could do that. Or we'll give you, you know, $25 million or $30 million. And some people might think like, why would you give D'Lo 25 or 30 million? Because now he becomes an expiring tradable asset that you can now use to go get various pieces. You can now go and use that to trade. So the Lakers would basically give him this big balloon payment with the intentions of we're going to trade you. You're going to get a bag that you're not going to get anywhere else. We're going to give you a boatload of money, but because we're doing that for you, we're going to send you somewhere and then, you know, hope maybe it's somewhere you want to go. If not, then you can just leave in free agency and go sign with the team that you want to go to. So it's a win-win for everybody. D'Lo gets his bag and gets a bunch of money. The Lakers get and don't lose D'Lo, which they can keep him and kind of let him play until they find that trade. It makes it so they don't have to rush. They're not in panic mode with D'Angelo Russell. Great example is what the Indiana Pacers did with Bruce Brown right? So Bruce Brown was supposed to sign with the Lakers. Bruce Brown actually ended up going and signing double what they would have gotten with the Lakers uh, with the Indiana Pacers, which then they were able to use to facilitate to go get the Pascal Siakam trade, right? So the Lakers would basically be following that blueprint. We're going to give D'Lo a bunch of money to go get a bigger fish that makes more sense for now in the long term and kind of helps us kind of facilitate a trade. And this is where the Atlanta Hawks come in. And again, something that I, I briefly touched on at the end of the video that needs its own attention because this is something that may signal the Lakers going and getting Trey Young. Now, I know a lot of people don't really want Trey Young, but I've said it before. I even don't really want Trey Young. I've expressed my opinions, I've expressed my concerns, but if the Lakers can get Trey, they're going to go get Trey. It just, it is what it is. The Lakers want guys that can help not only now and raise the ceiling now, which Trey does, but also post LeBron James. They want to start positioning this team, positioning this roster for beyond LeBron. Trey Young's 25 years old, got a lot of upside, a lot of potential. The problem with Trey is he's making like $45 million. So you have to trade essentially, if you, especially if you lose D'Lo, right? You have to trade. Reeves, Rui, Gabe Vincent, plus, you know, little filler. And you have to give up draft picks and everything else. So you're basically gutting your roster, which, again, Lakers would still have pieces. They still have some stuff they could do in free agency. I'm not too concerned with the depth, but it is definitely something as far as, like, the blue chip talent of the depth. Now, one of the things that Atlanta wants, right, is to clear salary. So Atlanta's cap situation is a little rough because of DeJounte Murray um, and then uh, uh, obviously Trey Young and his inflated contract plus they got a couple other they do have a couple guys that will be uh, expiring contracts this offseason and then like Clint Capella his money falls off the books next year so they do have a couple things but they're still kind of in this cap influx and so some of the reports that are coming out is that Atlanta's going to be looking for trades that could potentially clear off some cap space so for example uh, San Antonio Right? There's murmurs that they might want Trey Young. Now, San Antonio, is. there's been reports that have said San Antonio doesn't believe Trey is a San Antonio guy. So they're not really, but let's say that they are. Let's say that they throw their hat in the ring, right? Well, San Antonio can almost absorb most of Trey Young's salary, which would give 
the Hawks an exception, and then they kind of clear some money off their books. Or let's say DeJounte Murray. Say the Spurs are interested in DeJounte Murray. Spurs can absorb almost all of DeJounte Murray's money and then kind of clear up some cap space for Atlanta, right? Well, this is where the Lakers could come in. So let's say the Lakers sign D'Lo to a $30 million deal. Get it. Just using that number, right? Well, now you only got to get to 15 more million for Trey Young. Now you don't have to give up Reeves and Rui and all these other things. Now you could do something where you send uh, maybe, let's say they still want Reeves and you have to give up Reeves, right? But maybe now you could keep Rui. So you could go D'Lo, Reeves, you know, Jalen Huchifino or whatever, and then go two, two, three first and a pick swap, whatever the the, you know, the draft picks turn out to be, right? So now you're not gutting your roster. You still get to keep Gabe Vincent, Rui Hachimura, right? Get to keep multiple guys, or maybe they can work it out to where they keep Austin Reeves. And now Atlanta, they get what they want. So now they get, most likely it would probably have to be Austin Reeves, but now they get Austin Reeves, right? So they get that asset that they really want that now they could pair if they want to keep DeJounte Murray, uh, and then on top of that, now they got $30 million in expiring contract on top of Clint Capella. So they basically just ride through this year. That money falls off the books. Now they're good. Now they have. Now they can kind of, you know, they have some wiggle room to start retooling and revamping the roster the way that they do. They just got to kind of get through that dead year, right? So for those that are following. So what this does is it puts the Lakers now in a position to where they have more flexibility. Now, I know some people might be in the comments and go, well, Atlanta didn't want uh, D'Angelo Russell, right? They wanted to stay away and avoid D'Angelo Russell, but things have changed, right? So they didn't want to trade Trey on originally. Originally, they wanted to keep Trey and Johnson and, uh, and build around those two and go that direction. Well, now they're open to trading Trey Young and they just got the number one pick. So they're kind of looking at like, hey, this might be a good time to hit the reset button and kind of start over. They didn't want D'Angelo Russell because they didn't think D'Angelo Russell made sense alongside um, Trey Young, right? They didn't think that those two could work together. And they also wanted Austin Reeves, but the Lakers didn't want to give up Austin Reeves for DeJounte Murray. It's a completely different scenario. Now, Atlanta has changed their course. They've changed their path. So now Atlanta is looking at, hey, we want to cut sal They basically want to do what a rebuilding team does. Cut salary, cut as much salary as possible, right? Get as many assets as possible. And then on top of that, you know, try to be able to retool and revamp going forward, right? So the Lakers, if they were to give D'Lo this big balloon payment, now they are better suited to kind of give Atlanta what they want. And that might be one of the reasons why the Lakers are considering this. Because you got to assume and imagine there have been some dialogue already, some kind of feel of like, okay, what do you guys want? We want Trey. What are you kind of looking to do? Right? You know, yeah, yeah, we... we don't want to get this done quite yet. We still got to figure stuff out on our end. But like, just so we can kind of gauge and start positioning stuff, what kind of things are you looking for, right? And they probably told them, right? We want to clear salary. We don't want to take back a bunch of salary and stuff like that. And, you know, because that was also another thing. They didn't want D'Lo opting into his contract, right? They didn't want his 18 and a half million on the books. Well, now if they're unloading Trey Young, they can get that money off the books and because now, again, they're going a completely different route, a completely different position. Trey Young wasn't available at the trade deadline, right? DeJounte Murray was. Well, now Trey Young is supposedly available for the right price. So now it just it puts the Lakers in a better position to go get that other star and also maintain depth, right? Even in a, you know, let, even in like, let's say a Donovan Mitchell trade or something, right? It also gives, again, gives teams flexibility or, you know, a Brandon Ingram or whatever, right? If a trade for a star does end up developing, instead of this team going like, ah, yeah, but we got to, like, we don't really want this guy. We don't want Gabe Vincent in his contract, right? Like, yeah, we want Austin Reeves, but maybe they maybe they already got a part. It's like, ah, we don't really want Rui. So now we either have to work out a third team or take on Rui and his money and go figure something else out, Right. It just gives the Lakers more options and more flexibility to, to kind of orchestrate a trade or various trades. Or 
if the Lakers do get a trade done, right? So like, let's say that they, they end up pulling off, uh, let's say it, not even Trey Young, say it's DeJounte Murray, right? Let's say they trade for DeJounte Murray and then they do a couple other little trades, right? And you still have D'Lo on your books. Well, now you can go into the trade deadline, kind of ride out this season, kind of get to the trade deadline and go, okay, what do we need, right? Let's say the Lakers, say the Lakers sign Valanchunez, right? Let's say that they, so they sign Valanchunez, they um, trade for DeJounte Murray, and let's say that they trade for like, uh, you know, an Alex Caruso or something like that, because they do have the assets now, right? So say they go get DeJounte Murray, Alex Caruso, you got Jared Vanderbilt, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. That's your starting five. Or maybe they bring Vando off the bench and actually start D'Lo. So let's say it's like Murray, D'Lo, uh, Caruso, LeBron, and AD, right? Say that's their starting five. You got a couple pieces off the bench. Well, now let's say that they go, okay, well, you know, we got Valanciunas. We got that center. Say they also get like a, a Kevin Porter Jr. So it's like, okay, we got our like six-man scoring guy off the bench. We could use some more defensive guys outside of Jared Vanderbilt. Or we could kind of maybe upgrade at the two-guard position or whatever, right? Like Max Christie, let's say he's still not there yet. And it's like, ah, Max Christie's still another year or so away, right? Well, now you got D'Lo's contract. So if one of these teams that were trying to be a contender and now aren't, right, now you can go to them and go, hey, well, we have – a $30 million contract or $25 million contract or whatever they end up paying D'Lo, we have this big inflated contract that's expiring that we can, we'll take back that salary because we're already over the cap. This is our team regardless for the next few years. So, hey, here's, we'll give you this expiring. We'll take on those contracts and we'll add them to the roster and again, kind of just give them more flexibility to retool and revamp the roster. So this is actually kind of good news, exciting news. Um, but it also kind of signals that like the, this might be a, a, a hey, Trey Young might be coming type thing. But we'll see. Time will tell. Like I said, it's not like guaranteed yet, but we'll see how it all plays out. Obviously, D'Lo still got to opt out, all that stuff. I'm sure that they've had dialogue and communication. Um, but anyway... Again, as always, this is a discussion. Past question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you like the idea of them uh, giving D'Lo this like inflated contract? Do you think no? It's not a good idea. Again, I just it gives them more flexibility going forward. But love your thoughts and opinions. How do you feel? Down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.